It is high school basketball action tonight on WOSN. In the WC matchup tonight, the finale for the Bluffton Pirates in conference action as they host the Allen East Mustangs. Good evening, everyone. Alongside Evans Gilter, I'm Patrick Gambler. Looking forward to a great matchup tonight in the home of the Pirates. Bluffton coming into the contest at 16-4, and 5-2 and two in conference. Looking for win number six in the NWC tonight for Allen East. They sport a 10-8 and eight record, 4-2 and two in the NWC, and are trying to get a, a win over Bluffton, something that has evaded them here in recent memory, and they will have their hands full tonight, Evan, as uh, we're kind of looking for some things that, to keep an eye on as we look into this contest. And the one thing that, and I'm sure you'll add on to this uh, in whatever you're looking for tonight, but it's hard to look at the teams on the court and go, man, Bluffton, if nothing else, has a lot of height advantage against Allen East. And over the last couple of years, that seems to be the Achilles heel for the Mustangs. And that's the very first thing I have on my list, Patrick. Okay. Does Allen East have an answer inside? Their tallest player is a 6'3 freshman, doesn't get a ton of playing time. Bluffton, on the other hand, 6'5", 6'4", 6'2", and all those guys have strength and skill. So we'll have to see if Allen East can match up inside, but I'll tell you what, on the perimeter, both these teams pretty similar. And, and one of the things I'm watching for is just merely, can the Nets stay intact? Because both of these teams will fire up a lot of three-pointers, and they'll hit a lot of three-pointers. Allen East shoots 35% from beyond the arc, Bluffton at 36, but besides that, they shoot a ton of threes. So we're gonna see some good guard play. And then I wanna know, I wanna see who controls the pace. Both of these teams have some athleticism. They can run the floor. Who's going to come out on top probably depends on who can control the pace, who can play at their speed. The Pirates like to speed up their opponents. Allen East has a lot of quick, shifty guards, but they're quick in the half court. So we'll have to see what happens in that regard. But I'm really looking forward to this one. As you said, two teams with a great NWC run. Allen East 4-2, and two, Bluffton 5-2. and two. Uh, Both teams with an outside shot to get that second place spot in the conference. It'll be the first time these two teams have met since the postseason last year. They met in Elida, a game that Allen East appeared to have well in hand, but Bluffton kept chipping away at the lead, forced overtime, and came away with the win in the field house. As we are underway here for our Spallinger Millwright first quarter, and Carson Klum gets it started with a Jones excavating three-pointer. Right over top of 6'5", Klum, 14.9 points per game, 30% from three. Bluffton will have to adjust and not give him that much space. As pass inside as Bluffton counters, Kerry Wright putting that one up and in. And Kerry Wright normally coming off the bench, but tonight senior night, he's a great spark plug for the Pirates as he gets things going. And here's Klum once again, taking it strong. That one no good. That's something you're going to see a lot from Klum tonight. He's used to swinging among the treetops, as it were, especially against taller teams. Here's Merrick Donaldson with a strong take, and he's fouled. Donaldson with two free throws coming up. That was good defense in help for Bluffton by John Paul Yoder, another one of those seniors. He's six foot four. And like you said, Bluffton with a lot of bigs inside. And for a team like the Mustangs that like to get to the rim, it's going to be tough going up against all this size. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw up and good by Merrick Donaldson. Donaldson 73% from the charity stripe this season. Yeah, interesting year for Donaldson. 13.8 points per game, 45% from beyond the arc. And he shoots a lot of them, but he was out for quite a lot of time with uh, an illness. And so he missed some of the season. And I'm curious to know what his stats would look like had he not missed four or five games during that injury stretch. Plum pulls up and that one shot blocked by Blake Summers. However, able to get it back. Here's a long three ball by Brooks. That one is no good. Summers with the rebound. I like what the Pirates are doing. They're putting their tallest player on the best shooter against Allen East. Another Jones excavating three-pointer, no good, but Wright with the putback. We talked about Wright being a spark plug right there, the offensive rebound and putback. Now the Pirates lost in transition. Brooks corner three, no good. Jones excavating three-pointers, a miss. And talking about tempo, this has been back and forth. And Carson Klum with the steal. Taking that one up and in off the glass. Nice steal there from Klum, just jumping the pass. Kind of lazy from the Pirates. Trying to dribble through the zone. There's a nice pass. Inside, right there, John Paul Yoder putting it in. Great finish from John Paul, but that's Wade Ginther getting inside, making that defense collapse and dumping it off to his teammate. Senior to senior connection on senior night early on. 
Crum with the basketball. Pirates with an 8-5 lead on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. You see right on the far side, face guarding Young. Ethan Young, 12 points per game, 40% from three. They do not want him to get touches. Kicking it back out to Deacon Jones. Here's Klum. Jones excavating three-pointer, no good. And contact down low is going to go back the other way. We get Ethan Young with his first foul. So that's the second team foul for Allen East. Full court pressure from the Mustangs. Mustangs don't go terribly deep. They really can ill afford to have anyone in significant foul trouble early on. Here's Donaldson, nice take with the right hand. It's a nice take right there. And the good thing about Donaldson is he'll shoot from anywhere. You saw him with a little head fake deep in three-point range, and he gets his defender to bite. Deacon Jones uh, see parts for him, and he puts it in for two. Miscommunication on the screen coverage there. Good job by Jones getting to the rim. Half court trap, able to pass out of it is Donaldson. Corner shot, three pointer on the way by Blake Summers, no good. Right, rebound, fade away, doesn't get it. Third chance opportunity goes in for Blake Summers. And that's three offensive rebounds for Bluffton, four points off of those rebounds, doing a nice job inside, taking advantage of their size. Well, I'm losing the handle on it, but is fouled in the process. As that will be against Blake Summers. Clum, his first go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you there. Clum's not going to be able to shoot over the top necessarily, so he's going to have to use that quickness to get by Summers and did a nice job there putting pressure on him and forcing the foul. Inbound successful to Logan Helzer. Ball back to Clum. Brooks thought about shooting it to the charity stripe that he gives up to Helzer. Pass it off. Young tightly guarded by Wright. Pirates switching the screens up top. Step back looking for Helzer. Helzer, and that shot rocked by Yoder. And Yoder with two inches on Helzer. Yoder listed at 6'4. Helzer listed at 6'2. Pass it off to Deacon Jones. Jones inside to Helzer. Helzer looking for some space and gets just enough to put that one in. Now only down by three, 12 to nine. Got good positioning underneath the basket, able to pin Summers deep and a nice little move and an easy basket. Jones activating three-pointer on the way and in by Wade Ginther. We talked about the Pirates and their emphasis on shooting three-pointers. Ginther really not one of their top three-point shooters, but he is a leader, averages 11 and a half, and gets three to go right there. Pressure on the defense, almost had it stolen away. Brooks gets it back, passes it off. Helzer, short jumper, puts it in. It's a good play by the sophomore Brooks, getting inside and making a defender come help, just dumping it off to his teammate for the easy bucket. Ginther gives away, right corner. Joan excavating three-pointer, no good. Clum with the rebound. Carson Klum leading the team. Here is Brooks with a Joan excavating three-pointer, no good. Klum leading the team with 7.2 rebounds a contest. And how about that steal there by Ethan Young. Now Klum passing it off. Jones from the corner, no good. You see early Allen East trying to hit from outside. Not finding the bottom, but certainly clear what they're trying to do. And right, going left to right for two points. Right now with six points early on, right around his average per game for the season. Making senior night count. Jones passing it off, 244 remaining in the first quarter. It's a six point Bluffton lead. Here's Brooks. Taken inside, 14-footer short, and knocks that one out of bounds. It'll be Bluffton basketball. And the Mustangs setting a lot of screens early on here, making it tough on the Pirates. But so far, Bluffton able to communicate well on switching screens, yeah. staying in front of their man, and making things tough for the Mustangs. And Allen East is one of those teams that if they can hit their shots, if they have a hot shooting night, they're difficult for anyone to handle. But if those shots are not falling, and so far they haven't been, at least from outside, then that's where they have to generate offense in other places. That's where they can struggle, especially against a team that has a height advantage like Bluffton does. And how about the uh, shooter's roll there for Tara and Boblet? Nice shot from Boblet there, pulling up from the elbow. 6.4 points per game. 
Coach's son with the nice form as you normally see, yeah. right? Yeah. Spend a lot of time in the gym. Nice cut inside. Here's Brooks getting around. The defense might have been blo partially blocked. Couldn't tell from my vantage point. Here's Boblet again. Kicks it out. Landon Worcester. Shot is no good. Rebound put up and in. And it counts from Brody Summers. So that's Brody Summers coming off the bench. He's another guy that we talked about. Six foot two, but a huge frame. He's a great defensive lineman for the football team that had great success this year. Now showing his size and how that can benefit him on the basketball court. Second foul on Brooks. Metzger Financial Services timeout. We will take it as well. 151 remaining. It's a 10 point Bluffton lead here on WOSN. Welcome back this quarter, sponsored by Spallinger Millwright Services. Proud to support the Allen East Mustang. Team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication to installation. Located on Hanthorne Road and online at Spallinger.com. 10-point Bluffton lead, looking to make it 11 is Brody Summers at the line. 78% from the charity stripe this season for the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw. Mustangs really need to start boxing out. I know it's tough. I know Bluffton's bigger than them, but they've given up a ton of offensive rebounds early on, and all of them so far, except for one, have resulted in second chance points. Free throw no good, but out of bounds. And it will stay down here with Bluffton. Inbounds. Pull up. Shot around the rim. No good. Clum with the rebound. Plum, who will be right back up here in the fall playing basketball for Bluffton University. Go Beavers. Go, the there way. you go, go Beavers, yep. Jones passing it off. Deacon gets it back. 122 remaining in the Spallinger Millwright first quarter. And the defense stout for Bluffton. Allen East not finding a lot of lanes to cut. Not a lot of lanes to pass in. Here's Helzer has it now outside. And the ball handlers haven't done a great job of using their screens. When you go off screens, you need to get right into your, your teammate's shoulder, not allowing any space for the defense to get through. And Helzer called for the travel. And right now, they're just leaving too much space between mm -hmm. them and their teammate. And Bluffton's able to get around those screens. They're able to switch it. And ultimately, Mustang's not able to find any space here. So Allen East will turn the basketball over. It goes back to Bluffton, under a minute remaining here in the first quarter. Already a 10-point lead. And if you're Allen East at this point, if you're head coach Gabe Young, the last thing that you really want to see is this game get too far away ahead as Klum pokes that one out, recovered by Boblet. Good job by Klum recognizing that that ball was going to come back up to the top. He jumped the pass and knocked it away. Summers passes it off, bobble it, open three, top, no good. And a foul underneath. That's going to be against Summers, a Blake Summers, and that's his second. Summers tried to tip that ball out to a teammate, but in doing so, hit the arm of an opponent. Carry Wright checks back in. Summers that picked up his second foul, so he'll have a seat. Merrick Donaldson also going to have a... Catch a breather for the final 28.5 of this first quarter. Here's Jones with 18 seconds. Young pulls up off the glass and in. That's a tough shot right there. Young well defended by Worcester, but a good job elevating, getting that shot up and over. Banks open on a Friday night. How about this answer right there? Brody Summers behind the defense. Final seconds, Clum. Puts it up from half court, no good. Eight minutes in the books here from Bluffton High School. It's a 10-point Pirate lead, 23 to 13. You are watching high school basketball action here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. And tonight's instant replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance, dedicated to providing the best insurance protection at the most reasonable price to as many people as possible. 
Second quarter about ready to start here. The ball, Spalding or Millwright second quarter. 23 to 13, Bluffton Pirates. And based on what you were looking for in the first uh, part of this game, Evan Skelter, uh, what do you what do you like so far from either side? Well, the first question was, that, does Allen East have an answer inside? And right now they don't. Right, Bluffton with the offensive rebound advantage, they've been putting them back in. And I'll tell you what, Bluffton's done a nice job penetrating inside and creating space for the bigs as well. Yeah, they're taking advantage of their size, but they're also taking advantage of their quickness from the perimeter, making that defense break down and finding open players underneath. So I like what Bluffton's doing there. Allen East, they've done a nice job running through their offense and being patient. Not a ton of turnovers here, just not a lot of shots falling because Bluffton's defense has been great. So Allen East, yeah, they're down by 10 here, but offensively they have not played that badly. Clum with five points to lead the attack and also uh, excellent at getting steals and they're trying to save this possession. Indeed they will. Good hustle by both teams getting on the floor. Clum, one of the best thieves in the Northwest Conference, averaging 4.7 steals a game. And how about that, Ethan Young? We'll say inducing the contact and getting to the foul line to shoot three. Yeah, but we finally saw a good screen from the Mustangs. We talked right before the break about the fact that they're not setting good screens. They're not using their screeners. They go to a break between quarters. They come out. The first screen was great. Wright got held up. By the time he got around that, trying to close out on the shooter, it was too late, and he ran into him rather than contest. Least free throw up and good. Ethan Young, 61% from the charity stripe this season. Doesn't get to the foul line a ton. He's averaging about one attempt a game as that second one is no good. What he does shoot is three pointers and he's been fairly proficient at that this season, checking in about 39% for the season as that second one is good. You know, fairly proficient, might be selling him short. 40% is pretty nice, Patrick Kamler, I'll tell you what. <laughs> that is a good shooter, no question about it. One of the best in the NWC. I was underselling it a little bit, <laughs> I, I recognize that. It's like a clinical diagnosis. That's a proficient shooting percentage. <laughs> foul underneath by Ethan Young. They actually get oh, Kerry Wright Kerry for White, the offensive Wright, foul offensive right foul there. there. Yep. He just tried to drive and be strong, but ends up putting a shoulder right into the chest of the defender. Referee saw it. Two fouls on the Pirates here early on in the quarter. Plum getting direction from head coach Gabe Young, and here we go. Keegan Jones into the contest, and Boblet with the steal. Stop, pop, good. That's what they teach you when you're in second grade right there, right? Jump, stop at the basket, let the defenders fly by and go up and score. Nice job by Boblet. Here's Clum driving, having to stop, kick it back out. And Ethan Young trying to feed it to Clum. Very tight window he was trying to get it into and unsuccessful in doing so. Worcester with the ball now. Minute and a half gone by in this Spallinger Millwright second quarter. Back to a 10 point lead for Bluffton. Another tip by Klum. He's done a nice job against Donaldson. Merrick with four points tonight, but they've been hard to come by for him. Nice spin move, putting that up with one hand. Couldn't get it to go to Ginther. Ball controlled by Young, and here come the Mustangs. Young cutting inside off the glass, doesn't go. Ball went about as far down as it could without actually counting. Yeah, that's a tough shot right there too. Defender in his face, kind of off balance, but almost gets it to go. Here's a three-pointer up and in by Merrick Donaldson. Jones excavating three-pointer. 45% from outside. You could see the good footwork, the nice smooth release, the backspin on the ball, nothing but net for Donaldson. That's a good three-point percentage. <laughs> Not bad, huh? There we go, yeah. Not bad. What a difference five percent. He is proficient is. from out there. <laughs> Very proficient indeed. That shot doesn't go. Clum with another steal. Having the sky use all of his 5'9 to put that one up, and then that spin move doesn't go. Boblet with the rebound. And that can be the problem with the steal in the backcourt. A lot of times... You get the steal, but you don't have numbers to help you out. Now Klum tries to jump it, gets called for the foul. Just his first, first against Allen East of the quarter. So Jones comes in for Young. 
Hunter checks in for Klum. So Hunter Williams played a little JV earlier on, but I really like his game. He's got good touch around the basket, some pretty good footwork for a big man. Just a freshman. That's the 6-3 that we talked about earlier. Bluffton maybe a chance to match. Or I'm sorry, Allen East maybe a chance to match Bluffton's size here as they go right inside. See, they are looking inside. Boblet and has that one slapped away. Assessed to Helzer. That's his first. Helzer, one of the top scorers for the game so far tonight with only four points. Here's Boblet pull up. That one a little off to the left side. No good. Helzer with the rebound. Good time. Good job boxing out by Allen East, but they also had. Some of the bigs for Bluffton away setting screens. Ooh. Brooke off the glass and in. Just a sophomore, good touch from Brooks. Working around, Ginther pulls up. Joe next evading three-pointer, no good. Summers with a rebound. Working against Helzer and puts it in. It's just that size. I mean, right there, Helzer did a nice job standing his ground and at least putting up a fight, but Summers just too strong, powering that up and in. Allen East. Three-pointer, Brooks, that one is long. Bluffton just having an answer every time. Now here's a long pass, up and in, coast to coast. That's Wade Ginther to Bean Ginther, the brother-to-brother -brother connection on the deep one, an easy layup in the Pirates with a big lead. Mince, uh, it's a uh, Metzger Financial Services timeout. We will take it as well, 32-17, to 17, Bluffton on top. Here on WOSN. Welcome back, 32 to 17, Bluffton on top of Alanis. The score continuing to extend more and more for the Bluffton Pirates. Really about every time Alan East does come up with something on offense, Bluffton has an answer almost immediately too, Evan. Yeah, Bluffton's done a really nice job not letting one mistake turn into two. They've had a turnover. Uh, they've had a couple bad passes here and there, a couple missed shots, but Really, they've done a nice job weathering any potential storm that Alan East has cooked up. And defensively, right now, the Pirates just suffocating, switching to his own look here. There's a nice cut Ooh. inside, and that one swatted out. Brooks on the take, and that ball swatted almost back to the dairy, dairy freeze, dairy bar. I'm trying to remember what the that uh, place we, in the corner is. We call is. it the dairy freeze here. It's dairy cool. freeze, yeah. okay. <laughs> Jones excavating three-pointer by Jones, no good. It's going to open up next month, by the way. Here's Oh, can't wait. Donaldson, that shot, no good. Clum had it and had it poked, but it was last touched by Bluffton. See, I'm one of those people that thinks that ice cream places can just stay open 12 months a year, even though it's snowing. Sometimes you just you just want some ice cream. You know? The problem with the ice cream places around here, though, is that there's no indoor seating, right? You have to get your ice cream and eat it outside. And in the winter, I honestly, Patrick, I'm not interested. That is a fair point. The uh, the outside part of it would uh, would not be appealing. Ice cold in here for the Mustangs here lately as well. Indeed. Summers corralling this one. Had been a loose basketball. Now here's Donaldson. He kicks out. We got a mismatch inside as the size has switched off on the screen, but Summers outside. Without a doubt, and they're going to take advantage of it. Worcester working inside against Klum. Kicks it out. Donaldson, Jones excavating. Three-pointer, splash down. Can't lose Merrick. He's two for two now from outside. Ten points here in the first half. 35-17, Bluffton out to an 18-point lead. Plenty of opportunities for our Eastside Insurance replay. As you've seen a number of shots, that one just a little bit too high. That will be an Allen East turnover. Yeah, the Mustangs trying to the skip pass there to try to break down this zone, make the Pirates move quickly, get out of position, but the pass just over the head of the teammate. That was Brady Brooks. 
Coming up on two minutes remaining in the second quarter. There's a nice cut inside. Donaldson finishes with the right hand. Yeah, that's a little counter to what the Pirates like to do. They go to, to the high post, and they usually run a guy off of whoever has it at the high post, but that time they just slipped it and went back door. Nice, easy look. 9-0 run for Bluffton. 20-point lead. Clum, corner three, and he gets it. That's his best look of the evening, and he finally gets one to go. 30% from outside, averages 14 points. He's already at eight. Here's Donaldson again. Heat check. No, that one just a little short. Books double teamed. Jones and the reach will be called against Wade Ginther. Foul number three against the Pirates here in the quarter. First against Ginther as he takes a seat. Blake Summers checking back in. Carrie Wright and John Paul Yoder. So those subs being made as we come up on 90 seconds remaining in the first half. Plum controlling the basketball. Allen East down 17. Has spot shot rejected by Yoder. See, the Pirates are content with that right there. They didn't worry about switching the screen. They just ran drop coverage, let him go inside and relied on the size to slide over and knock it away. Ball poked away by Klum and out of bounds on Bluffton. Now Klum decides to kick it back out, working it around. Here's Brooks now. We come up on the final minute of the second quarter. Klum around to Ethan Young. Young tightly guarded by Wright, able to get past, doesn't go. Hunter Williams puts it back up. That one no good. That's one you got to get in the bottom of the net. An easy look at the basket like that. The Pirates doing a nice job defensively inside. Jones excavating three-pointer no good. Here's Boblin on the cleanup. Can't get that one to go, and we're going to have another foul. I think that'll that be on Boblet. Boblet. It is. That's his first. Looks like that is the team's fourth. So Allen East will be shooting free throws from here on out, if it comes to that, for the, uh, for the remainder of the second quarter, that is. See if they play for the last shot here, down 17. Gives it up to Jones. Pulls up, 18-footer, no good. Uh, looks like no, Evan. Yeah, I think I'd go for one there, too, try to get a steal and get sure. closer here, but now the Pirates a chance for the last shot. Final 13 seconds as Bean Ginther. Nice cut inside, Bob went all alone, closing by Jones, and he is fouled, and Wright is grabbing his left foot there on the court with 6.3 seconds remaining. And they're going to take a look at him. We will take this time out. 17-point lead for Bluffton. Six seconds left in the first half. We'll be right back here on WOSN. Back tonight's free throw is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. About to see a pair of free throws here from Taryn Boblet. Pirates up 37 to 20, looking to extend that lead. 63% from the charity stripe. Five of eight, make him six of nine on the season. Boblet, the Second born of Coach Todd Boblett, Trey, his older brother, a high jumper at Finley, doing a nice job already here in the winter track season. Second least free throw is good. Final seconds, gives it up. Ethan Young puts it up from deep. That one is no good. A great half of basketball for the Bluffton Pirates as they head to the locker room up 39-20 to 20 over Allen East. We're back for the third quarter. When we return, you're watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School. About to start the third quarter. Our quarter sponsor, Spalinger Millwright Services, proud to support the Alanese Mustangs. 
team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication to installation. Located at Hanthorne Road and online at Spallinger.com. Our timeout tonight sponsored by Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future, call 419-225-6067 or visit MeskerFinancialServices.com. And our three-point sponsor tonight, R.D. Jones Excavating. Serving your excavating needs for over 50 years, visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all area athletes and go Mustangs. Pirates have Allen East in a hole, 39-20 to 20 as we begin the second half. Patrick Handler, Evan Skilder here with you. And if you're Allen East, we'll start with there. What, if you're Gabe Young, what do you want to see? What do you need to see here as you begin the third quarter, Evan? Well, I think you chip away at this point. You're not going to make a 19-point play or a 19-point basket, right? And so for them, they've got to buckle up defensively. They have to be strong inside. Easier said than done, I know. But they have to rebound better. That's going to help. Logan Hilzer starts off with a positive, hits that 16-footer. But the Pirates' offense has been really tough, too. They move the ball nicely, and they've got Merrick like Tomlinson. That. We talked about answers every single time for the Pirates, and they have had that 41-22. 14 points for Donaldson, who has done a nice job all over the court, kind of a three-level score tonight. A couple looks at the basket, a couple looks from mid-range, and a couple threes as well. Jones looking inside, kicks out to Brooks. Jones excavating three-pointer, no good. Quick release right there, and the momentum kind of taking him backward as well. That's a tough look. And Klum with the steal, but a foul in the process, which is going to go against Helzer. No, nope, uh, take that back. It is Helzer. Yeah, it is Helzer. Yeah, yeah that's second. right. That's his second. Bluffton inbounds underneath the basket. Summers, shot no good. Young corrals the rebound. Donaldson with the steal. Just quick hands right there from Donaldson. Back the other way. That one doesn't go. And Yoder, second chance. Third chance to Summers, and that one goes. The ball almost stopped on the rim. Yeah. It came to almost a complete stop. But again, the Pirates, two offensive rebounds, two more points. Pirates giving themselves chance after chance on offensive possessions. That's something that Allen East cannot afford to give up here. Now Brooks cutting inside, has some space. That one doesn't go. Back into the hands of Bluffton. Wade Ginther bringing it across the timeline. Coast to coast, and he's fouled. Well, going back to that defensive play on the other end, and it's a nice job by the guard for Allen East. Brady Brooks getting by the bigger defender, maybe a, a slight Athleticism advantage, but because of the size of John Paul Yoder, he's still able to alter that shot, and ultimately it doesn't fall. So, again, this, the pirate length is just so tough. That foul is on Deacon Jones, his first team second already in the third quarter. That puts Wade Ginther at the line. First Lee's famous recipe free throw did not go in. That one does not go in either, but he gets the rebound. Another offensive rebound. That's three already of the half, or on the half, excuse me. Ginther loses the basketball out of bounds, so the Mustangs will get it back with 6.27 remaining on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Pirates a little full court pressure here just to slow things down a bit. Jones Mustangs missed it. an open guy in the corner. Indeed they did. It's Keegan Jones outside. Here he is. 5'9 freshman. Working inside is uh, Jones, and then he will be fouled by John Paul Yoder. And that's the first on Yoder tonight. Klum to inbound. Puts it up to Deacon Jones. Jones with the Jones excavating three-pointer. Good effort right Good. there from Wade Ginther. Closing out, he lost him on the inbound play. But by the time that shot was released, Ginther had recovered with that athleticism. Nice job getting that hand up as well. Boblet lost the basketball. A couple turnovers here for the Pirates on the last few possessions. Not like them here this evening. Still a 21-point lead for Bluffton. Ethan Young, step back, shot is short, just grazes the front rim. And the Mustangs really 
forcing the issue right now, not able to get good looks. Donaldson Boom. with a three-pointer. 17 Donaldson. points for him tonight. Just a sharp shooter, doing a nice job. Now a pull-up jumper. That doesn't go. Mustangs really struggling. Donaldson trapped, able to pass out of it. Gets it to Genther. Genther attacking off the glass and in. Such good control around the basket for Wade Ginther. We've seen it all season. He does a nice job getting inside, but then gathering himself and finishing with ease. Another 9-0 run for Bluffton makes it 48-22 with 5-10 remaining. We'll take this Metzger Financial Services timeout. You're watching high school boys basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard tonight sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. 48-22 lead for the Pirates over Allen East. Uh, Pirates currently on a 9-0 run. That's their second 9-0 run of this contest. It has helped them to build this 26-point lead here just with five minutes to go in the third quarter. Sparked by that defense. I'll tell you what, they're doing a nice job not allowing Allen East any space to score. Now they're coming out, out of this timeout in a full court look. Able to break it does Allen East. Jones not pass. This is Klum now working inside. Gives it off to Helzer. Helzer can't get it to go. And one and done for Allen East offensively. And again, it's Summers inside. Not blocking the shot, but doing enough to alter it and cause that miss. Bob went Able to save that one. Kicks out. Summers. Jones excavating three-pointer. No good. Klum with the rebound. Nice rebound from Klum. Jones has it in the corner. Dribbles out. Step back. Jones excavating three. No good. Not a lot of success from beyond the arc tonight for the Mustangs. No, and we knew if they were going to put up a fight in this game, they were going to have to be sharp from outside. And like you said, we just haven't seen that so far this evening. Pirates doing a nice job defensively. So the shots just have not been falling. Here's Klum attacking against Donaldson. That one high off the glass and in. Nice basket there. Gets Donaldson on his left side and gathers himself right at the rim. Good patient finish. There's Get Ginther there. again. Hoop and the harm. And Ginther's just so controlled around the basket. I know I just talked about it, but you could see it right there, too. He's, he looks out of control. He makes a spin move where he looks off balance, but then all of a sudden he's gathered and he's able to lay that in off the glass perfectly, draws the foul, converts. And hits the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Back to a 26-point lead for Bluffton. Boblin almost took that inbound away. He did. Klum able to hang on to it. Helzer working underneath. Nice move, decides to pass it off. I think he decided to pass that before he realized that Summers had tumbled. I think you're right. Klum saves that one. Now Brooks pass inside off of Helzer's. Looks like his shoulder, maybe his upper arm, and right into the hands of Blake Summers. It's another and good driving kick by Brooks. Here's Deacon Jones taking it all the way, and he's fouled. Good hustle from Jones right there, getting that steal, getting down the court. I like this Allen East team when it comes to their youth. You know, they've got some, some players doing some big things that are young. You look at Ethan Young. He'll be back next year. Deacon Jones, a starter as a sophomore. Brady Brooks as well, just a sophomore. We've talked about... Hunter Williams, the big man who's a freshman that's played a couple minutes here, but a guy that's still growing and, and looking really coordinated and growing into that body nicely as well. Yeah, you know, that's one of these, that's one of those things. I don't know, I don't want to say it's overlooked per se, but you look at a team like Allen East and you look up and down the roster, and obviously Carson Klum is a senior, but you look at the rest of these guys, Trey Hensley, who uh, is injured tonight, he's not playing. Uh, everyone else is young. Everyone else, junior, sophomore, I mentioned some freshmen there. There's a lot of uh, youth at Allen East that, uh, this team could be uh, be pretty good over the next couple of years. They haven't been too bad this season at 10-8. Here's a steal by Ethan Young. A little too strong off the basket. 
Good hustle from Landon Worcester right there. Does enough to create the miss, or force the miss, rather. And going up against an experienced Bluffton basketball team, you looked up and down this roster, a lot of seniors and juniors. That shot by Worcester is off the mark. Here's Brooks taking a strong off balance left hand. Can't get that one to go. But a lot of Bluffton's key players will be back next year. In fact, everyone on the court right now will be back next season. Said so it's a pretty junior heavy lineup. Long three ball. Jonas fitting three pointer, no good. Ethan Young wanting it back, passes it off. Fall away jumper by Logan or Carson Clum is in. Yeah, I like that shot from Clum. He knew exactly what he wanted to do with the ball. Goes up, drops it in, and I think Coach Bob was going to take a timeout here. He does. Metzger Financial Services timeout. First time back to back buckets in this contest for the Allen East Mustangs. We will take the timeout as well. 2.16 remaining in the third quarter. It's 51-28 Bluffton here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance, dedicated to providing the best insurance protection at the most reasonable price to as many people as possible. 51-28 lead for the Bluffton Pirates. Patrick Hamler, Evan Skilled are here with you. High above Bluffton High School. The treasure chest, sure. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the pirate ship, the treasure chest. Making Allen East walk the plank right now. All the pirate references. Here you go. Pirates with the basketball, Summers. Losing that one out of bounds, it will go back to the Mustangs. Yeah, good job being in the right spot right there by Hunter Williams, who we just talked about, another one of those freshmen who's starting to come into his own as a basketball player, slides over after Summers slipped the screen, able to force the turnover. Mustang basketball, two minutes remaining in the Spallinger Millwright third quarter. Here is Hunter Williams, puts that one up and in. Good touch there from Williams. Two good plays in a row, one on the defensive end, one on the offensive end. And that ball deflected and into the hands of Carson Klum. You know, the Pirates getting a little sloppy here. Jones excavating three-pointer is up and good. Ethan Young puts that one up and in. And a uh, little bit of a run here for the Mustangs. Yeah, I think the Pirates are just kind of, I, I said sloppy, they're playing a little bit quicker than they'd like, throwing some bad passes. They just need to settle down a little bit, and you see that one go up and out. It's like, a, yeah, I lost the handle of that one. That will be Allen East basketball. Now the Mustangs find themselves on a 9-0 run of their own. Yeah, I see Coach Boblet took a timeout earlier to try to settle things down. It didn't work because Allen East came out and scored two straight buckets, and the Pirates turned it over a couple times, so he'll take another one here. Metzger Financial Services timeout on the floor as we uh, take a look at what's going to be coming up. Of course, the tournament draw was held this past Sunday, and both of these schools know uh, what their tournament future is going to look like. Allen East with a matchup coming up against Riverdale. Of course, changed it up a little bit. The team's actually been able to host a, uh, a basketball game, a tournament basketball game for the first time. So Allen East uh, getting to host Riverdale. That game will be on the 27th, and Bluffton, my, uh, my eyes aren't what they used to be. Bluffton hosting Columbus Grove on the 27th as uh, Bluffton would probably be looking forward to a certain extent to that game, something of a rematch since it was probably a little bit of a surprise to everyone outside of Columbus Grove that uh, the Bulldogs were able to take care of business against the Pirates that night. Yeah, and the Pirates were ice cold in that game. I think they shot something like one for 24 from beyond the arc, which is definitely not like them. They're a 35 or 36% three-point shooting team. And so that game will be at home. Like you said, the team's uh, the higher seed gets to host the first round, and the Pirates will play that one here rather than in Columbus Grove, so certainly looking forward to that one. And then Riverdale, certainly a, a, a good team, an up-and-coming program, but this Allen East team probably feels confident in that one as well. That shot by Klum is off the mark. Out of the timeout, we'll see what Bluffton decides to do. And I imagine one of the, one of the tougher coaching jobs has to be when you have a pretty large lead, how to maintain focus. There's Donaldson putting that one back in to stop the 9-0 run for Allen East. That's a good find there from John Paul Yoder. 
who got the, the pass and saw that the defense had broken down a bit. Williams has it, gives it up to Klum. He gives it off, here's Brooks taking it strong and extra pass, that might have been. Look, and here's a Jones excavating three-pointer up and no good. Cut underneath, back on the other side, there is John Paul Yoder and he puts that one up and in. Super unselfish play right there from Merrick Donaldson. Nice job beating his defender, getting inside and just passing the ball right around the held defense. Brooks puts it up with time expiring, and that is no good. 22-point lead for the Pirates as we head to the fourth quarter. 55-33, Bluffton on top of Allen East. You're watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Spalling your mill right, fourth quarter, ready to get started here from Bluffton High School Pirates with a 55-33 lead over Allen East. Getting ready to go to 6-2 to wrap up their NWC campaign. Here's the Jones excavating three-pointer that is just a bit short by Bean Ginther. That was a nice pass from Ginther, I think. Yeah. That's what we go with anyway yeah. when yeah. that happens. Bean Ginther, the younger brother of senior Wade Ginther. His first name is Luke. For those of you that are curious as to whether that's on the birth certificate or not. There are people close with him that still don't know his real first name. That is how much <laughs> he is called Bean. I would, uh, I would not be surprised. I have a friend who we've called Phoebe for years. And my wife picked up on this and said, is that his real first name? I'm like, no. What's his real first name? I shot in there by Summers and I went, Hold on, I need to think about yep. that. It took me a couple minutes. I remembered it was Aaron. Aaron is his... Phoebe uh, is what they call Phoebe. Aaron. Phoebe, yeah. Okay. Now, where did Phoebe come from? I don't know. He's, you know. I, I have one guess. A big Friends fan. No, no. Okay. It's spelled differently. Okay, okay. There's no O in it. Yeah, that's the, that's the big difference. Ball out of bounds. But, yeah, it's just, you know, there's just no rhyme or reason as to where nicknames come from. You just, they, they just happen. I'm sure there's reason for his nickname, for Bean's nickname, but just, just don't have it. Do you have a nickname? I do. Are you allowed to say it on air? Uh, I can. That shot's blocked. Uh, Deacon Jones attempting the free pointer. Bluffton off and running, looking for the alley oop, and instead we'll get the foul. More unselfish play from the Pirates. Nice job by Bean Ginther, throwing it up for Trey Boblet. That's not Trey, I'm so sorry, Taryn. <laughs> Taryn Boblet. I'm sorry, Taryn. Uh, I almost called him Todd. That would have confused a lot of people, <laughs> but I tell you what, he does bear a striking resemblance to his father. That Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is up and good. A patch or various forms of patches is a nickname patch. of mine, so. That's a good one for Patrick. Yeah. That second least free throw up and good. My uh, my my new brother-in-law, because my sister-in-law got married, uh, her, her husband got married in, in July, and he's like, has anyone ever called you Patch and lived to tell the tale? I'm like, that's actually a nickname of mine. He's like, oh, <laughs> nice. oh, good. <laughs> A little tougher defense by Allen East. Lead out to <laughs> 26 now for the Pirates, 61 35. It's a tough finish from Ginther right there. Pirates almost able to get another steal. Brooks cutting inside and I think they called a foul on that play. Called against Ginther. On the floor, so an inbound for Allen East from the baseline. Klum passes it in. Pull up by Young. That one just long, and Klum with the rebound. Rare second chance opportunity for the Mustangs on offense. Williams kicks it back out, working it around. Here's Jones back to Williams. Gives it up to Klum, and that one no good, but a foul called. 
Nice cut right there from Klum. And a good find. A lot of times you see that. A guy throws the ball inside, and sometimes the defense's head will turn and see who the ball goes to. And the second you turn your head and a defender, or excuse me, your assignment on offense goes past you, you get an easy look for a layup. That time Klum fouled. First Lee's free throw no good for Carson Klum. Klum 65% from the charity stripe this season. Hits the second. Sixty-one thirty-six on the web agency scoreboard. As we mentioned, the Pirates wrapping up the NWC portion of their schedule tonight against Allen East. Here's Summers taking that one inside. And then they will wrap up their season, their regular season, next week here against Paulding. Old NWC foe, and actually an interesting one for the last week of their season. The girls play at Paulding the night before, but a tournament game. It used to be the girls would play away and the boys would play at home against an NWC squad. Now non-conference opponents. Here's Boblet taking it inside, and last touch by Allen East. The Mustangs, after they leave here tonight, actually have three more basketball games to uh, get into their season. Tomorrow they play Bath in a mid-afternoon, say late afternoon contest. And then they've got the big one against Columbus Grove next Friday night and then against Perry next Saturday before their playoff game against Riverdale on the 27th of February. So a lot of basketball yet for Allen East. Jones excavating three-pointer, no good. Jones bringing it across. Thought he was going to take it all the way. Pass it off to Brady Brooks. Here's a Jones excavating three-pointer by Jones. No good. Tipped back into the hands of Jones. He'll take it strong. Reverse layup up and in. Nice bucket right there as he tucks that ball away on the right side. Mustang still fighting here late in this game. Getting their shot up and in. The Pirates have just gotten too many easy looks right at the rim. Yeah. Allen East on the perimeter, not doing a good job stopping the Pirate guards, and they're getting inside, drawing some help, and the Pirates able to finish after the dump-offs. Carson's foul line jumper doesn't go. They've gotten a lot of easy looks. That basketball stolen away into the hands of Klum, and also they've just had an answer for just about every time as Young puts that one up and in. And we'll have a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Alan East wants to talk this one over. We'll take the timeout as well. 4.03 left in this one. It is all Pirates, 65-42. Bluffton on top. You're watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And R.G. Jones Excavating, our three-point sponsor, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.G. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all area students, athletes, and go Mustangs. Cotton Eye Joe blaring through the sound speaker. Song that existed before most people in this building were alive. What year? What year did it come out? Uh, mid '90s. That's what I'm going to go with. Mid '90s. I think so. Uh, you know what? Now I'm starting. To, I'm starting to wonder if that's right. I think I had that when I was in high school, way back in the 20th century. Back to action here. The Pirates. Good ball movement. Summers quadruple teamed. Doesn't get that one to go. Able to corral the rebound is Yoder, and he'll head to the line for a three-point play. A nice little cap to senior night for John Paul Yoder, a hard-working young man. Gets the basket to go, six points for him, a free throw coming up. By the way, I'll give you a hint on Cotton Eye Joe release year. It was mid-90s. Now the Bulls did not win a championship in this year. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'll say 94. There you go. Yeah, 1994, okay. If you're unfamiliar with Patches Kamler, big-time Chicago sports fan. You know, it's funny. 
you think, man, it's it's always going to be good to watch Chicago Bulls basketball, and then <laughs> it just is not. The ebb and flow of a program or a franchise. Well, it's been more ebb than flow here the last <laughs> yeah, they've 15 years at least. Struggled to get things going. Look at the defense there from Bean Ginther. Elzer looking for something and just unable to find the defense for Bluffton. You know, at, they've got a 25-point lead. And Evan, you've mentioned this a couple different times, but the defense tonight for Bluffton has really been on point. They've not been able to get good looks, and the good looks that they've had, they just haven't been able to go in. Um, if, if Bluffton's going to make a, a deep tournament run, and I think they've got that possibility, it's going to be on the back of the defense they play. Yeah, but that district is brutal. It's going to be interesting to see who comes out of that. You have Ottawa yeah. Landorf, you have Wayne Trace, you have Bluffton, Spencerville, the NWC champions. Congratulations, by the way, to Spencerville, who won a huge game here mm -hmm. to seal the deal uh, just a couple weeks ago. One of the best, uh, honestly, Patrick, one of the best high school basketball atmospheres I've been a part of was that Bluffton-Spencerville wow. game. They have a chance to meet back up. You have Columbus Grove in there as well. Just a ton of really good basketball teams. Uh, it's going to be a grind to get through that district. Yeah, this district tough as always. And Ottawa Glandorf, uh, you know, head coach Heiss McLaughlin continuing to do a terrific job at Ottawa Glandorf. And they are the dragon at the gate, so to speak, as some substitutions being made as we'll see some new and young faces getting in for both sides here. And the two seniors that are still playing in this game have come off a standing ovation from the Pirate Faithful. John Paul Yoder, Wade Ginther coming off the floor, and sadly, Kerry Wright's injury has kept him out of this game in the second half, but a shout out to Kerry as well. Those three seniors, a great career here at Bluffton. Hunter Nichols in for the first time tonight for Allen East. And Worcester, a nice cut to the basket. Carter, Catching the pass and finishing. Carter Hohenbrink also checking in. Branson Hilty checking in for Bluffton as well. Here's Jones looking for something and is going to be fouled in the process. Worcester. That's his first. Kane Wright and Quinn each is checking in for the Pirates. Nice play there from the Mustangs. Yeah, putting that one up and in. Nice play, as you said. 69-44. Pirates average 63 points per game on offense. 69 here, so a testament to their great offensive evening. Kane Wright passing it off to Hohen Brink. The just like football chant starting there a little bit for the Pirate fans. I don't always love that cheer. I think, you know what? Football season was a while back. <laughs> it's basketball time. Williams. Bang! Jones excavating three-pointer is good. Touched all the rim before it went down. That's Hunter Williams once again. Williams with seven points tonight. I was going to say, having a nice night. Well above his average of one. <laughs> I think he's going to turn into a pretty good basketball player. I really I, I think do. So. I, I like his coordination. I like his footwork. He's got a good-looking shot as well. Once he finds some consistency, he's got good size, can play inside and out. Only a freshman. Yeah, I think there's a lot of bright spots for Allen East. As we mentioned, they're a young team. Their JV team, I think, is almost exclusively freshmen, mm. which makes the freshman basketball games interesting. I bet. Well, they came in here and, and beat our freshman team here at Bluffton recently. I think this is the first I've given away that I'm a Bluffton guy. I said our freshman team. Right, yeah, yeah. That's my bad. Pretty I, <laughs> whatever. The future may be bright for Allen East, but the present belongs to the Bluffton Pirates. 69 to 47. The Pirates get it done at home tonight as they notch a conference victory over Allen East to go 6 and 2. And that's how they finish their NWC schedule. They finish 17 and 4, or move to 17 and 4 on the season with one more game to play. A, uh, that is going to wrap it up for us tonight.
I want to thank Jacob O'Neill, Kelsey Beimer for helping to put this all together. It has been a fun one here at Bluffton. Our final score is 69 to 47. Brett Skelter and our entire WOSN staff. I'm Patrick Campbell saying so long, everyone, from Bluffton.